Good morning and greetings from South Georgia, USA to the entire world. We're out here on the 12th of September, 2024, feeding the deer and declaring the name of Jesus Christ before men, Yeshua the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Savior of the world. Proudly proclaiming the name of Jesus. Give you a little bit of a weather report here. It is sprinkling a light rain here in South Georgia. As you see, I have my jacket on and a long sleeve shirt. It's a little bit on the chilly side. And we're expecting rain most of the day. The red deer are up here. No fallow deer yet. All right, I'm gonna get behind the camera now. All right, it is starting to sprinkle light rain. I do not want to get the camera wet. Maybe I can hold this over here a little bit and I'll get Debbie to hold the little notepad over the phone camera. Okay, as the job that I am undertaking is to declare the name of Jesus before men with a twofold purpose, I would say the main purpose is to find the lost sheep that belong to Jesus. And the secondary purpose is to touch base with the sheep that have already been found, to seek fellowship with them, and to congregate with them. And we are congregating by way of this phone, they call it, a phone that, uh, a smartphone, I guess this one's pretty smart, to tell the lost sheep that Jesus is looking for them. Some of you are hiding out in the nooks and crannies, in the rocks, in the forests, in the cities, in the jails, and some of you are hiding in plain sight, dressed in a nice suit of clothes, having a good job, and still lost. Not knowing what your purpose in life is. Now it is starting to rain a little bit more, so I probably are going to have to cut this one kind of short because we don't want to damage our equipment. I'm calling to those people. You know who Jesus is. Other people have sown the seed. You have heard it. And the Bible states that one man sows and another reaps. I am a gatherer, a hunter. Other people have told you about Jesus, sometimes members of your own family, friends, various ministers of Christ. I am endeavoring this day to suggest to you that it is time for you to come to Christ. I am, I know that my words, or I trust that my words are reaching some of you right now and that you are going to, that you are ready to do that. You are ready to come to Christ. That's who I'm speaking to. 
I'm going to tell you how to do it. It's time to quit beating around the bush. It's time you know you're not happy. You know you're not fulfilled. You know you're not going to live forever. You know that the answers are not in science and medicine. And it is time. You know you're old enough to know that people have died, people that you went to school with, maybe while you were in school. Probably two or three people died while you were still in junior high school or high school. Relatives have died. You know where they are. They are at the cemetery. Jesus has promised that he can remedy that situation for you. All you have to do is say, Jesus, will you save me? He will cause you to be a born-again human being, not a human being. I'm going to change. You won't be human anymore. You will be a born-again spirit being. And then you will start your journey, if you're still alive as a human being, your spirit man will begin to grow. And as your human mortal man gets older and nears its completion here on earth, your spirit man will begin to take over. And at the time that you die, your mortal man will not exist anymore. It'll be in the ground. But your spirit man will live on. And as the Bible teaches, at some point in time, your, you will be resurrected from the grave and your mortal man will become an immortal spirit man, I think, with a form. Jesus, when he came out of the grave, was recognizable as a person. He had, he had arms and legs and all that kind of stuff. He was a little different. They had a little bit of trouble recognizing him, but when they got, you know, really looked at him and talked to him, they said, hey, it's him. He's alive. This is the promise of Jesus. So this morning, on the 12th of September, 2024, I am calling to the lost sheep. Come, Jesus will get you in the end. Even if it's a, the last minute of your life as you're laying there dying or crashed in a car or whatever happens to you. But it would be better for you if you came now because you will have a more satisfying life as a born-again believer. You will begin to get control of your fleshly man and your fleshly man will begin to get in better shape as you follow the leadings of the Holy Spirit. Get out of the mess that you've gotten yourself into, the drug addictions, the alcoholisms, and all of the other stuff that you've gotten into, the bad relationships, all of this stuff, the Holy Spirit, which you will have in your heart, will begin to turn you around. The past... Jesus will forgive all your sins, and the past will be, essentially, he will forget that, and you will start over again. Now, you may stumble a little bit still, but as, you're, as you mature as a born-again man, you should begin to get a decent life again. This is the promise of the Bible. This is the promise of Jesus. He said, I am the way. I am the truth, and I am the life. When he said way and truth and life, he, wasn't, he was meaning he is the way, the only way. I know a lot of people get mad about that, but I'm sorry. He's the way. There's only one way there, and he is the truth. He is the truth. There is no other truth. Everything else is a lie or an illusion, and he is the life. He is real life, not temporary life like we have here on earth. This is temporary. Everybody knows that. They just choose to ignore it. 
I'm not trying to talk you into it. You're going to come to him if you belong to him. I'm just trying to suggest it would be a good idea to do it now. I think you will be glad you did. And we need you. Jesus wants you to become part of the group. He wants you to begin to help spread the word and find the other lost sheep. And we are waiting for the time when he comes back to earth to claim his bride. He is away right now preparing a place for us. Now, if God has to prepare a place for us, it must be pretty darn good. He's up there with his saw and his hammer, getting together, getting, getting on with it. I guess he has a construction crew of angels, and he is preparing a place for us. All right, I think that that's going to end it here. Uh, it is beginning to rain a little bit harder. Thank you very much for listening. And we would like to say the Lord's Prayer to end this session. Please say it with us. And by the way, this Lord's Prayer is the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples when they asked him, teach us to pray. And in my opinion, it has all of the components or main points of salvation if you think about what you're saying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.